Good morning. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. Glad to have you all here today. You saw the blood mobile out there. If you're able to give blood, please do. I plan to give uh, after the late service. And uh, thank you for those who are able for giving uh, the gift of life. Uh, now that they're doing signups, we've had people that are coming from the late service coming early um, to get in there. So if you ever signed up, uh, you can stick your head on there and say, bless you. I signed up and I'm going to be here at 9 and hopefully they'll, they'll expedite you so you don't have to wait. So we thank you for that. Today is also the Feed My Starving Children Casserole Breakfast Fundraiser. I got two to go. There are tons of types of casseroles. I think 16 total. So uh, thank you. Which we, uh, we met this week, the team, and decided we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to be chintzy. Uh, you can each have two slices. And that's pretty good, isn't it? The fruit is here, and uh, we're ready to roll. So if you've got a ticket, that's great. If you don't, you can negotiate with them and see if they'll let you have some. And also, uh, it will, you can take it to go if you need to take it to go today. So there's also drinks. There's, uh, there's enough coffee, coffee out there to feed an army. So. <laughs> the fellowship hall floors, the final piece of the water pipe break up in the ceiling above the kitchen. Uh, the fellowship hall floors will be cleaned in September, professionally cleaned. And uh, that will be September, we'll remind you later, the 12th through the 14th. It won't disrupt the ministries here. Uh, he will work around you, but we can't put things back. If you wonder why things like if you look in the storage room or Kay in the kitchen, you look in there, the floors still have to be uh, available. So Lou and Art, Joe and Kevin's going to be helping. We'll be looking for you to help move all the stuff out of that storage room so he can get the floor in there. So check your calendars to 12th through the 14th. Uh, be here. Excited about that? We'll be put back together. Family ministry. This young lady, Cindy, has her own corner out there in the fellowship hall. Instead of turning right where all the pickup tables is, turn left. She's looking for volunteers. She decorated it all up. She has a board up. We're going to get family ministry put on the wall. So Michelle did this for me. If you look at the bottom of this section of inserts, up at the top is all the dates and fundraisers we're doing for Feed My Starving Children. Now at the bottom, Michelle built this box, but it has a lot of dates, one per month. Guess what she has out there? The sign-ups for you to help her, one per month. Jace, are you excited? Where'd Jace go? There he is. He's hiding over there, so give Cindy a big amen. We're excited about that. Feed my starving children for us collecting here. After today, we will be at $25,000 plus. Are you excited about that? It's 30000 to have them come, and we need a little bit more to rent the forklift and the tables, or a bobcat, as Joe had to learn how to do. So we are already rolling into the next fundraiser. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? There are tickets on sale just like those, okay? The next one is Friday the 20th. It is $10 for a light lunch. It'll be at 1 o'clock. That's listed here in your bulletin. And the lunch is going to be egg salad, tuna salad, a scoop of each, and chicken salad, all three. And uh, you'll get some chips and drinks. But then the fun part, and this is fun. I can see Mary and Fred. It's the pie auction. We're very blessed that Ken and Vicki brought that to us. We're going to do another pie auction. Now, you might think, well, what is it? Come and check it out. I had no idea how this works. You don't have to wait till the end of it to eat the pie. I mean, it's kind of a free-for-all. And Ken is like leading the three-ring circus. He will get you to bid up on those pies. Louise Soltis, I'm going to get even with her. I wanted Patty's chocolate pie, and she found out, and she bid me up. I paid 55 bucks for a pie. <laughs> And Fred is liking that. Sharon Avery's apple pie went for $60. It is really, really, really fun. You can invite your neighbors. They have to buy a ticket. I've invited St. Teresa. I've invited everybody at Beef O'Brady's. I've invited Pastor Jim and the folks that do the packing with us from Live Oaks Community Church. And uh, we'll see what you get me to bid up on a pie. To give you how great it is and fun in an hour there were only 20 of us sort of the dry run for the last one we raised six hundred dollars in an hour on pies and everybody was happy 
because they had a sugar buzz, so the money they spent didn't matter. So we're looking forward to that. That's an exciting time. We do need pie bakers. If you would like to bake a pie, the sign-up is out there. As you go to the right out in the fellowship hall, then we had a lot of pies. How many pies did you auction? Do you remember? 16 pies. They all were sold, and 20 of us ended up with 16 pies. There you go. You ready for a sugar overdose? Yes. This wonderful insert is to show you all the things that you did for Lake Ware Middle School. So you can keep this and show your neighbors if they happen to buy anything. Of course, a lot of things were donated at Beef O'Brady's. I mean, I mean, just think about it. This year, we were able to do 81 backpacks, and 60 of them were donated from Verizon over at Bailey Plaza. So how about giving all that a big amen? The other insert that I want to lift up to you today, um, on the back side, it's telling you a little update on Lutheran immigration and refugee service and how they're helping the Afghan refugees that were here. You can still help with that. On the back side is the wonderful way to help the Hawaii wildfire victims. I have donated. It's really easy. It took about three minutes uh, to do. So if you want to do that, remember 100% of what you give is going to help them. One of the things they're doing a lot of there right now is feeding the first responders who were there and those with the cadaver dogs because there's no way to have food. It's all having to be trucked in uh, to that one area. So uh, great. To, all the good news is always out there, right? All right. We're going to take a quiet minute to pair hearts and minds for worship. As you're able for our gathering hymn, my hope is built on nothing less, if you prefer the hymnal, 596.
You may be seated. I have some extreme fond memories of that hymn, as some of you might remember. The first time I ever preached, and I was petrified, still terrified. Uh, the phobia of public speaking in my field pastor knew was great, greatest mentor I ever had, Pastor Leon Rawl, up in Lexington, South Carolina, at St. Peter's. He had me preach. It was either an Advent or a Lent Wednesday. And he said he didn't do that to me on purpose, but it was back then when you were preaching, you started to move during the final stanza of the hymn, so you were standing up in the pulpit. And that's when I realized when I was getting into the pulpit, it was up one step. It caught me that all other ground is sinking sand. <laughs> and I still remember the pulpit would have been here, and I looked over at Pastor Raw, and he was sitting this way in a chair, and I looked at him and I said, you did that to me on purpose, didn't you? And he didn't, but he had a big grin. But I based my preaching on that. It's always supposed to be Christ-centered. He's the rock we stand on. And isn't God amazing yes. that God was saying, keep at it, you're going to get this, and now you can't get me to sit down and be quiet? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We continue worship on page two of your worship folder with the apostolic reading. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We come together in confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose holy word never fails, whose promises are sure and true. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of the Holy Trinity and of our neighbors. Merciful and righteous God our Father, we confess that we sin. At times we hurt your communities. At times we squander your blessings. At times we hoard your bounty. At times we fail to be honest. At times we lack the courage to speak. At times we speak falsely. In the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God our Father offers his boundless mercy in his Son Jesus when we sin. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to claim the gifts of Jesus' forgiveness, grace, and mercy. We are granted salvation in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Continue with the prayer of the day. Let us pray it together. Glorious God, our Father, your graciousness in your Son, Jesus, saves your people and world, and you grant your creation your abundance. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to awaken in us a hunger for Jesus' salvation that satisfies both body and spirit, and send us into Jesus' ministries and missions for all of your people and world, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At the top of page three, we continue with the prayer for the world. Of course, we continue to keep the Hawaii wildfire victims and everyone there that's trying to bring about resolution to those things, especially those who are looking for the thousand plus people who are still missing. Of course, the hurricane named Hillary that's barreling onto California and doesn't used to get that kind of rain. I heard they're supposed to get a, a year's worth of rain in the next day, so that's a lot. And if you haven't heard, Washington State is now in the middle of a wildfire crisis and they have erupted again in Canada. I think Mother Nature is trying to tell us something. Yes. Somebody asked me what I thought about that stuff and I, I said to them, I said, I think as human beings at some points we forget that the earth is a living thing. And living things under stress, no matter what you believe, I'm not getting into the politics, but living things under stress, include us, what start to have problems when they're under stress. And that seems to be what's happening to me. But what do I know? All I know is all other ground is sinking sand. So. Let us pray together. Let us pray for all victims of any forms of violence, terror, human trafficking, and all displaced peoples. All victims of ethnic, racial, gender, sexual, political, and religious discrimination and violence. All victims of natural disasters or human-made disasters. All victims of war or warlike activity, conflict, oppression, and strife, including in Afghanistan, Sudan, Syria, Ukraine, and Yemen. 
Gracious God, our Father of healing and wholeness, through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring relief in every way you see fit for those impacted by natural disasters, human-made disasters, conflicts, persecutions, and wars. Empower all peoples to reach out to those impacted through the healing power of Jesus Christ. God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we admit our human frailties and recognize we live in a fallen creation. Restore us each and every way as you see fit, so that your will is done. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our gospel scripture hymn, Amazing Grace. I think you're doing a first verse of several hymns, aren't you? Yes. So today we're doing some crowd favorites, and we would like to let you know that if there are any songs that you love, you remember from your childhood, like the pastor was saying that he remembered uh, My Hope is Built, just let me know, and we will sing them, and we will ask you to come up and sing in the choir with us when we sing your song. <laughs> but the first and last verse of Amazing Grace. choose would you please stand as we sing to the Lord how great thou art
Jason. <laughs> Jason, it's good to see you this morning. And I want to tell everybody what you wanted. I want you to tell everybody what you wanted to take to school the other day. Will you tell them? The Bible. He wanted to take his new Bible to school. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is hope for the future. And I want to tell you also that a Hispanic family that was here last week, she, with her limited English skills, messaged me and said, thank you so much. My kids appreciated coming, and we needed the school supplies. So thank you so much for everything that you do. They came at the late service. Yes, we had two Hispanic kids. Mom didn't speak much English, but they came and they were just so sweet. And I'm hoping that they will come back. And I think they will because of you. Jace, do you like surprises? Heck yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Sometimes surprises are really good, like a birthday party. Someone throws you a birthday party. And sometimes they're really good, like somebody brings you a puppy, you have a new dog. But sometimes surprises can be not so good, like you have a math test that you didn't know about. That's not a good surprise, right? Well, I want to tell you, I've got a surprise in this box. I have a lot of things in here. And I'm going to let you pick a surprise. I'm going to guide you, though, so that you get a really good surprise. And I want you to do some things first, though. First of all, I want you to look out there and say, I love Christ Lutheran Church. <laughs> now, will you hop on one foot five times? That's good. That was way more than five. Good. Okay, now turn around in a circle three times. One, two, three. Good, 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 good. Okay, so he did all that. You did all that knowing that or having faith that I'm going to give you something out of this box. I'm going to guide your hand in here just so we pick out just the right thing for Jace. So don't look, okay? So turn your head away, and I'm going to let you pick out a surprise. Let's see. Oh, I want to get you the best surprise in here. Oh, I, I think you'll like this. Oh, is that okay? Okay, we're not done yet. <laughs> you know, what we just did reminds me of a Bible story. Everything reminds me of a Bible story. And you're going to be the same way because you want to take your Bible to school. So I'm so proud of you for that. So there was this, this time when Jesus was walking with his 12 friends. Do you remember what they're called? The 12 friends start with a D. Remember? Disciples. Yeah, disciples. <laughs> he whispered it because I whispered it to him. <laughs> Jesus was walking with his 12 disciples, and Jesus had been teaching and preaching, and we know how tired teachers get, right? So he was probably tired, and he was just walking with his friends. And all of a sudden, this woman comes up to him and says, Master, my daughter is sick. Can you help me? Well, surprisingly, Jesus just kind of ignored her for, and didn't say anything. But do you think she let that stop her? No. She said, Jesus, I need for you to help me. My daughter is sick. And Jesus said, well, I came for the Israelites. And if I were to help you, it would be like, me giving my children's food to the dogs. And here's what she said. She said, but even the dogs that are under the table of the people being fed, they get the scraps. They get the scraps. And Jesus said, your faith is amazing. Your persistence is amazing. Go home. Your daughter is healed. Now, what does that mean for us? It means that if you have faith, it might sometimes seem like God is not listening. And you keep 
asking again and again, and nothing happens. And it seems like he's not listening. But you know what? He knows what we need, and he knows when we need it. You know, I would have asked, I've been asking him for me to win the lottery for a long time, <laughs> and it has not happened. But I wouldn't be here right now if I had won the lottery. So he knows exactly what we need, Chase. He knows exactly what you need. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. And we thank you, God, that we have faith to listen to you, to know when it's the right time to ask for things, and to always know that you love us more than anything. We pray in your holy name. Amen! <laughs> thank you, Chase. All right. Uh, thank you, Chase, for coming up. The surprise was uh, uh, Play-Doh, that's what it is. So rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. If you prefer it in your bulletin, it's the top insert. Carolyn is our lector for 9 o'clock. Everybody say good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Carolyn. Good morning. Jesus te teaches his disciples that true purity is a matter of the heart rather than the outward religious observance. Almost immediately, Jesus' teaching is tested when a woman considered to be a religious outside approaches him for help. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Excuse me. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth, into the mouth that defiles a person, but it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone, they are blind guides of the, of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you always still without understanding? Do you not see whatever goes into the mouth and enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are the, what defiles a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyr and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I will send <clears throat> only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Give Carolyn a big amen. amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as Jesus, part of his teaching today, reminds us that our words carry lots of power. Our words can hurt. Our words can heal. Our words can be received not well when we have to reach out in a Christian way and tell someone their behavior is not Christian. But may we be bold when we know we use words that are hurtful or harmful. May we turn around, apologize, and repent. And may we rely on the Holy Spirit that helps us to think before we speak. As we do so, may we speak boldly as our confession says. At times we fail to speak when we should, 
but way we always, Father God, confess you as our Trinity, our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in that great mystery. That salvation, Father God, comes through your Son. May we boldly speak it and proclaim it. And may our actions, words, and deeds through the power of the Holy Spirit really convince people that we truly are Christian. There's an old saying from Gandhi that he loved Christianity, but he didn't like Christians so much because of what he saw in their actions, words, and deeds. May we be different from that. May we live out the gospel as best we are. When we err, get us back on track. And where we're doing great with the gospel good news, may we move full speed ahead with the Holy Spirit. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen, Jace. Great to be with you uh, this morning. Cindy and I were talking about um, today's gospel. We were talking about some family ministry and other things, and, and she asked me about this gospel. Uh, this is one of the toughest teachings that you will find in the entire Bible. One of the things that you will find about tough teachings, like Jesus' response to her, literally calling her a dog, you can't get away from it, is that if it is hard, the chances are it has been recorded the way it originally was said. How many of you remember where you were when 9-11 happened? Jace is too young. How many of you remember when the Challenger blew up where you were? Yes. Things like that you tend to be able to replicate and say, right? Yes. This account is only recorded in this gospel and in St. Mark's gospel. And it's almost identical, except St. Mark gives us a better geographical description of where she's from, not that she's not Jewish. He calls her a Syrophoenician versus a Canaanite today. So she is considered an outsider from the Jewish religion. And that's why Jesus addresses her today. But he's doing something more important, and he's commanding his divinity and how he's allowed to use us. He's been teaching over and over and over again. All these chapters, now we're into 15. He's going to continue to teach in 16. He's full-blown into his ministry. And as I said last week in preaching, he's been shifting how he teaches, always, always declaring his divinity. He began with the parables, which is referenced today. If you, did you notice that chapter 13 was referenced by St. Peter today? Did you notice? Explain this parable to us. Don't you remember at the end of 13 when Peter was with the large crowd and Jesus said after those five parables, do you understand all these things? What was the answer? Yes. Apparently he doesn't remember this one. We had the parable of the sower. What was the second one? The wheat and the weeds growing together. And what has Jesus said today? Anything that my father hasn't planted, he's basically saying is evil and it will be what uprooted in the final judgment. That is the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Jesus is teaching this new kingdom that he's talking about that everybody was astonished. He's teaching us things that we knew in our heart and our minds, but now he's actually making them come to life. And there's thousands of people following him, aren't there? Then he said the mustard seed, if you have faith, just like that woman today, you can do anything. What did he say to her at the end? Woman, great is what? Your faith. Jesus recognizes that, and he's looking for it in this. He went on and told the parable of the yeast, and then he went on the parable of the hidden treasure. You remember the seven? Then he went on the parable of the fine pearl, and finally the fish, and that's another judgment. There's the good fish and the bad fish, aren't there? And they're all in the net, and Jesus says, don't worry about that. We'll separate them at the end, and that's not up to you. Go out and be a Christian and be a gospel bearer. But then he switched teaching the last two Sundays in 14. Are you starting to get how Ma St. Matthew's putting together his gospel theologically? Are you starting to get how St. He's building. His divinity was on display in the nature miracles, right? Feeding 5,000 men plus the women and children. But in faith, what did he say? You give them something to eat. That woman's faithful today, isn't she? Heal my daughter, Lord, Master. Great is your faith, woman. We can do anything, Jesus says. Even feed thousands of people. Wow, isn't it kind of cool that for the second time in the history of this church, we're going to feed more than 100,000 people in the end of January and February. Did you ever dream you'd be living out that nature miracle? Did you ever dream you'd be living out? Then Jesus walked on the water 
as the disciples were sent across. And of course, the greatest account of this is when they see him. Peter says, hey, if it's you, command me to get out of the boat. And Jesus' divinity is on display, and Peter starts walking. And what happens? His faith falters, and he starts sinking. But Jesus says, take my hand. But what did he say to them? And he says to us every day, when he was walking on the water and they were terrified, remember this, this is for all of us. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. That is a faith statement, isn't it? That is a faith statement. Are you seeing his divinity on display? Isn't this theological picture St. Matthew paints? Great. You've got the parables, and then you've got the nature miracles, and now he's shifting. But he's teaching us something, that he is God, and he can do with us anything he wants. He can do with us anything he wants. He's being rude, and you can't get away from it, to this person because this woman, because he knows her faith. But he's using her to teach. Did you ever think Jesus would use you to teach? Did you ever think Jesus would use you to teach? Every time you sin and someone recognizes it and they go, I thought they were a Christian, Jesus is using you to teach. Every time someone sees you doing the right thing as a Christian and they know you're a Christian, they're saying, they're doing that out of their faith. They don't have to do it. Look what they're doing with their resources and their abundance that God gives them. Wow, that's exciting. Look at that mustard seed. Jesus is using her today, but he's going to go on next week. What's he doing? He's teaching us and using our faith. Next week, are you excited? A little prelim? We're going to chapter 16. A little prelim? Anybody excited? And you're just, you're just absorbing. Thank you, Jace. The smell of casseroles. <laughs> Jesus point blank asked the disciples, and I love this text. I don't care what the people say. Who do you say that I am? That is a great statement. It's just Jesus and his disciples. And who speaks up again? The same guy that got out of the boat. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And he uses Peter to teach. Peter, great is your faith. You didn't get that on your own, he says. You got that from my father in heaven because you're willing to listen and you've accepted me. But then the next Sunday, we get another starkly tough tough teaching which is something then jesus most likely actually said because what happens just like peter said command me to get out of the boat all right here he is he's walking what happened all of a sudden his faith faltered jesus goes on to teach them after peter's confession in two weeks the son of man must suffer and he will be crucified and on the third day he will raised and you remember what peter says lord no way is that happening here comes the tough teaching. He's using Peter. What does he say? Get behind me, Satan. He literally calls St. Peter Satan because he's sinning. What's interesting in all of that is one of the billboards that I like that sometimes is on the highway. I used to see it when I was going to Tallahassee for the football games. Peter wants things his own way, doesn't he? probably wants to install Jesus as king of the world and Jerusalem and defeat Rome, the billboard says, want to make God laugh? Tell God your plan for your life. <laughs> want to make God laugh? Tell God your plan for your life. If Jesus isn't using people to teach, then the story in St. John that I want to read for you briefly makes no sense. Jesus is allowed because he's God. Most of you remember the story of Lazarus, right? It's only recorded in St. John's Gospel. You remember the chapter? Chapter 11. There will be a quiz next week, Chase. That's easier than a math test. He's using Lazarus to teach and because these accounts are so long, it is clear because he actually boldly says it. A man, this is beginning of chapter 11, a man named Lazarus who lived in Bethlehem became sick. <clears throat> Bethany was the town where Mary and her sister Martha lived. This Mary was the one who poured the perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. It was their brother Lazarus who was sick. The sister sent a message. Lord, your dear friend is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, listen to him teaching. 
The final result of this sickness will not be the death of Lazarus. This has happened to bring glory to God my Father and will be the means by which the Son of God will receive glory. You realize that in chapter 11, after this, he rides into Jerusalem in triumph. It's the last thing he does in this gospel. Boy, it sounds a lot about like his death and resurrection, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When Jesus received the news that Lazarus was sick, listen to this, he's using them all, particularly Lazarus. Jesus stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said to the disciples, let's us go to Judea, which is where Lazarus was. Jesus, along that trip, said to his disciples, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go wake him. The disciples answered, if Lazarus is asleep, Lord, he will get well. But Jesus meant that Lazarus had died. They thought he meant natural sleep. Listen, Jesus did this on purpose. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Listen, but for your sake, I am glad that I was not with Lazarus so you would believe. Remember, he's getting ready to ride into Jerusalem and triumph. This is the last act that he does. Let us go to Lazarus. And you know the rest of the story, don't you? And everyone doubted. And there was a stench, as it's recorded, from the tomb. And he says, roll away the stone. And then the command, Lazarus, come out. And what does he say? And this is about sin. Unbind him. Which means in our death, we will be unbound. It has no dominion over us. Isn't that incredible good news? Yes. Poor Lazarus, I got to meet him and say, hey, dude, what was it like when you came out of the tomb? But I got to tell you, it kind of stinks because we all know you died again. I'm glad I only had to do it once, aren't you? Would you want to die twice? I don't think anybody wants to do that, but he used him. Okay, so you, are you with me? That's what he's doing with this woman by ignoring her and then insulting her today. Because he knows what's at the core. What is the basis of this? He's teaching us about her strong faith. He knows she's not going to give up. She calls him Lord, Son of David. She's calling him Master. Nobody else is at this point in the gospel. She recognizes this. Now, there's a commentary out there that says, well, this is really about Jesus inviting the Gentiles into the kingdom of heaven. That is completely insane in this gospel. Did you hear what I just said? That is completely insane in this gospel. That is a way of sugarcoating what Jesus says. Say, well, this is him saying that anybody who's not Jewish is allowed into the kingdom of heaven. That's already happened in this gospel. It is the earliest account of it happening. St. Matthew is clear. You see the picture he's painting. Do you see that? Did anybody get excited about this? My heavens, don't you like the theology of these gospel writers? Don't you like, thank you, Jace. So where did the Gentiles get invited into the kingdom of heaven? Immediately in this gospel, from the Magi coming. Where are they from? The east. Where is this woman from? The east. And what does it say? Only according to St. Matthew, it's the earliest gospel where Jews and Gentiles alike are given salvation. They're right at the birth of Jesus, long before he speaks to this woman today. Don't you like theology? Theology's fun. Math is fun too, Jason. <laughs> Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in the land of Judea during a time when King Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men, wise men, we believe it's three kings, it could have been any number of them, who studied the stars, came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? God has already spoken to them. And they're following a star on faith. We saw his star when it came up in the east. And we have come to worship him. And then Herod finds out and gets all upset. And you know later when they leave what happens. He kills all the newborn boys two years and younger after they met with Herod, this is their faith. With this they left and went on their way when they saw the star, the same one that they had seen in the east, and it went ahead of them until it came, stopped over the place where the child Jesus was. How happy were they 
What joy was theirs? How often do I tell you on a Sunday morning? You've got to be joyous because we're Christians. We're saved. The Christianity is an exciting faith. Are you joyous? Don't worry. I'm almost done. And then you get to go have the casseroles. <laughs> they were joyous when they saw Jesus' star. They went into the house and saw the child and his mother, Mary, of course, and his father, Joseph. Think about this. Here it is. The Gentiles grafted into the kingdom of heaven. What did they do? They knelt down and worshipped him. These mighty people from the east had an entourage, and they were rich beyond our wildest imaginations. They opened up their bags and offered him presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's not, Jace, what she had in there for you. God, their father and our father, warned them in a dream not to go back to King Herod. So they went back to their country by another road. There is no way that commentary makes any sense. They're already included. And God has spoken to them and said, you'll find the king of the Jews who happens to be my son and follow a star. Would you be that bold? Would you be that bold? They literally went into King Herod's palace and said, you're not the king. We're following the star. <laughs> and he resides in Bethlehem. Oh my heavens, are you going to go in the White House and tell the president that? <laughs> Are you going to go to tell the Russian president, Putin, that? You ain't king. I don't care if you can take my life. The king is Jesus, and he was born in Bethlehem. Isn't that a great faith statement? Isn't that a great faith statement? Are you excited about that? Yes. We have the king of the universe in our hearts and our minds and our souls, and we are called to go out and live out his missions and ministries. That's why this woman is so important today. Yeah, he called her a dog, and then she said, but Lord... Even the dogs get the crumbs from who? The master's table. Goodness, what a great response. So if things are going tough in your life, you need to be able to say in faith, Lord, I don't know why they're tough, but I know what you said to the disciples in the boat when you're walking on the water. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. I'm with you, Jesus says. Now live it. Do you like living it? Do you like living it? Because Jesus is using us. You know, we say um, when we do the quilt uh, dedication that it can be a simple thing of the squares that don't mean much until the quilters make them into this beautiful, beautiful garment. We're going to be displaying one out there. Did you see the rack that went up by the sewing circle? Isn't that going to be cool? The lift up that ministry? A visual is good, isn't it? Isn't it? Okay, you're just not with me today. I'm going to keep asking. You're tired. <laughs> Walk a mile in my shoes, young man. 25 years, Lutheran World Relief put out this report this week. I sent it to our sewing circle. 9,191,100 127 quilts have been delivered around the world over 9 million and I will tell you that that number is going to be too low that is the ones that they absolutely know about and there will be more that were made and more that were shipped that somehow missed a human inventory count right isn't that exciting how about giving our sewers a big amen, amen. that means most likely that nine plus million families or individuals receive the love of Christ because people take their time to sow, and with the love of Christ, they are delivered through that wonderful distribution network. And what did Jesus say? I gave you five loaves and two fish. Now look at that. It's now nine plus million quilts. But faith happens on a personal level, and live it out and be excited about it. You know, I joke with you all the time about beef O'Brady's. I'm talking faith to people all the time. One of the guys over there had his girlfriend, who's in L.A., on the phone, <laughs> and she wanted to meet me because I was a pastor watching sports. And it was hilarious yesterday, so he has her live on the phone, and we're talking, and he, <laughs> she says to him, Hey, Ray, you need to go to church. <laughs> and it was really funny. <laughs> He's supposed to come back. He's been here before. <laughs> but I thought it was really funny. She's dogging him from L.A. to come to church. <laughs> but I want to lift somebody up. Tony Bluesuits. You notice that Sue's here this morning. Yes. If you don't remember, Tony had 18 hours of surgery over two days, and we weren't sure Tony was going to make it. He's done remarkable. Miraculously, he has moved to the club as of yesterday. Oh, wow. 
He finally was able to get there. His gastrointestinal system had shut down. It's like a paralysis. He is recovering slowly but surely from that. Give her a big amen. amen. That's a long trek she's been making daily. Do you know what room he's in at the club yet? Five. Room five. That's where, that's where Larry Reinhardt was, our church member. He's now back in the village's hospital, so we'll pray Tony doesn't end up that way. So Tony was able to eat, so when I saw him this week, I brought him Holy Communion. And you know what Tony said to me? There he is, after all that suffering, after all that. He was starting to get ornery about the staff, so I knew he was doing better. (laughs) He said, Pastor, can you hang on a second? Because I invited the nurses to have communion. Can you hang on a second? Because I invited the nurses to have communion. So Tony called his nurse, it happened to be a male nurse, and he looked at Tony, and he hadn't been the one that heard that originally. And he said, really? Well, let me go see if anybody's available. So we waited, and unfortunately, no one was available. But that young nurse, that man came back, and he said, I can't do it right now, I've got too much to do. But I want to thank you on behalf of all of us for, listen to it, the invitation. Isn't that more important? They knew he had all those surgeries. They knew he was suffering. And there's Tony giving back, even though he was mad because they weren't taking care of him the way he wanted. Isn't that the invitation we get here? The Lord says, take heed, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Come take my hand in bread and wine. What a great way. And he says, go live it out. Every mission and ministry that this congregation engages is is on faith. In faith, we ask St. Anne, Byzantine Catholic Church, to worship with us. In faith, the Girl Scouts are in here. In faith, the quilters sew. In faith, Jesus said to us, I want you to do family ministry, and I want you to do it now. And I've sent you somebody. And now she's getting you to sign up for the monthly events, right? I'll remind you on the way out, because I know some of you are going to eat. Isn't that incredible good news? But I live by something that I've shared with you before. It has nothing to do with that billboard that I said. I don't tell God what the future is. This I have up here this morning. This happens to be St. Anne's. Isn't it cool? This is where they hang their incense. I don't think I'll try that one on you just yet. (laughs) But I knew they had it. A long time ago, I preached this about faith. Jesus can use us any way he wants. Maybe we always say this. Faith is not knowing what the future holds, but who holds the future. That is what Jesus is teaching us today with the woman. She knew that Jesus held her and her daughter's future. It doesn't say she knew what the answer was going to be, but she knew because she called him Lord, Son of David, and Master. If her daughter had died, he was going to take her to the eternal kingdom. If that isn't true, then Lazarus, who he let die, would not be in the eternal kingdom. May we live by this, and may we get out in our actions, words, and deeds, and be joyous, because when we're joyous, it's infectious. If that isn't true, then what Tony Blusowitz did in that hospital room wouldn't be infectious. And I witnessed that it was infectious because of the invitation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Rise as you are able for the Apostles' Creed. Tony's ears are probably burning. He really was ornery. He goes, this is a lot different than ICU. All they do here is they stand outside and gab. And so I listened to him for a little bit, and then I looked at him and I said, man, you are feeling better. He goes, how do you know that? I said, because you're ornery and you're complaining. (laughs) Living together in faith, trust, and hope, let us confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As I get the Lord's uh, table ready for us uh, today, if you think about the radical teachings of Jesus and how much he loves us, ponder on the night in which he was betrayed that he loved his disciples enough to initiate his precious body and blood. And in St. John's account, even washed their feet. That is astounding that God loves us that much. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out the Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray as we sing the Lord's Prayer. Come to the Holy Lord's Banquet, for all is now ready. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen.
verses or any of you curious today about the missing verses at the beginning of that gospel when Jesus is referencing the Pharisees what he's teaching as I get the Lord's table they have seen his disciples eat without washing their hands and they're mad about it and what he's teaching them is that's not what defiles somebody it's what comes out of the mouth right but he's also teaching us they were overly overly hyperactive about rituals and ritualistic worship what they were missing was living the gospel or living the commandments they were keeping people away from God aren't you glad you're part of a church that worships but where do you spend 99.9% .9 of your week as you drive out into the Lord's missions and ministry fields and he says, hey, I'm watching your face. Live it out. Isn't, but it's exciting, isn't it? Yes. Come on. Jace took his Bible to school. Amen. Amen. And hallelujah. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, continue to strengthen us and keep us in his grace and the power of the healing Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rise as you are able as we sing the final blessing together. Jesus strong, amen. Are sending him. Shine, Jesus, shine.
about Cindy's sign-ups, if you can help her on those Saturdays. The next event is in September. It is a water slide event. It'll be a lot of fun. Jace is, I'm sure, ready for that. Yep. Go out the door to the left is all her sign-ups. And uh, for the food, thank you for the casserole makers. We're going to say a quick prayer for those of you who are going to eat. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for feeding with, with spiritual things, the love of Christ, his precious body and blood, and his holy word and the gospel and all the scriptures. And send us forth to be light in his world. May this food nourish our bodies to do so. Thank you for it. Thank you for guiding us to do Feed My Starving Children events. And we're just so grateful to be blessed by you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Continue to bring Christ to all people today and every day. Go in peace. Share the good news. We will with thanks to God. Don't forget, if you know how to make a pie and can help us with the next Feed My Starving Children, the sign-up is out there. and You can buy tickets for the lunch and the auction. Have a great week. It smells good in the fellowship hall.